Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're creating a detailed game ready axe. In this episode we're talking about the unwrap so we can have a good clean unwrap and have no problems when we come to baking and texture painting. So there'll be lots of tips in here for you. If you like what you see here then check out the description for my website and playlist section of my channel for other free courses. Or you can follow the links to my character course where you can learn to make a full game ready detailed character from scratch. Okay so here's where we got up to last time we were ready for unwrapping and I've got my axe low poly selected and I'm in edit mode at the moment. Now one thing that's probably worth doing at this point is to check your face direction. It's quite often when we're adding planes as topology or moving them around and duplicating them that we might have some flip normals. The easy way to check that is under your overlays there's face orientation and we can see that actually my strap here, the retopology for my strap, is all facing the wrong way. So anything highlighted red, you need to sort out and make it blue. Very easy to sort out, you select all with A, and then Shift N to recalculate the normals. And you can see the dialog box down here, and there's inside and outside in case it hasn't worked. So it will basically flip it to the other side. So if you have any problems, you might need to select individual faces and tick the inside. Now it's a good idea to take a quick moment to check your low poly is accurate and close to your high poly. So I'll deselect all and come out of face orientation mode. There's a couple of areas such as down the bottom here that I think could do with a tiny bit of tidying up. What we're trying to achieve is to make sure that the inside mesh isn't sticking out too far, so the high poly mesh. It really isn't too bad here, but what I can do if you need to tidy anything up is let's say select all these and if you press Alt S that will scale by the normals. So if I press Alt S now, so it will push my low poly mesh outwards away from the high poly mesh. So somewhere around there I would say, we don't want to lose our shape too much around here. We might even want to select these as well and Alt S and push those outwards. And these two last, Alt S. The only thing is, can you see the edge of our high poly there and our low poly there? So it might be worth in this case, selecting edges with two, and selecting the edge loop that goes around the bottom here. So I'm Alt Shift left clicking, but I have to do that in sections because there's a pole there, so you have to do it in sections. And I'm just going to bevel that. So Control B to bevel. And now I'll Alt S just to bring it out slightly more. And I think we're a bit closer now. Let's just go to X-ray mode there and just see how close we are. There's a few edges which we might want to take care of. And that's just a case of going in and selecting those faces. I'll turn X-ray mode off and Alt-S and pull them back in to somewhere around there. So just a little bit of tidy up, Alt-S, push that one out and we're much closer to our high poly there. There's a few other places like up the top here. That's already got a bevel at the top so we just need to select these two, Alt-S. to somewhere around there, a little bit showing through like that is fine, it really is minimal. I'll select that one vert and Alt-S with that just to tidy that shape up a little bit more. And I'm pulling that one in very slightly. You can adjust your mesh slightly if you think you need to, but because it's got snapping on, it will snap right to the high poly. So you might need to select them and then alt test just to pull them back out a little bit. A bit like the shrink wrap pulls it out a few millimeters. I'm doing the same by pressing alt S here. I'll just stick those out a tiny bit more and these ones. So I'll just go around the mesh and just remove any blobbiness. So I'm selecting faces that I think are a tiny bit blobby, Alt S and just minimize those. Also holding down Shift when you press Alt S, so Alt S then Shift will do it in very small increments which might help you. So there really is only tiny bits sticking through and that's absolutely fine. The main thing we're looking for is the silhouette. So if I go to X-ray mode again and just see how far I'm sticking out away from the mesh, it's a little bit actually around the back here. So I can select those going down there and move those back in, turn X-ray mode off just to make sure it's all all right. And that's good. So just keep into that silhouette as best you can. Okay, so we've reversed normals, we've sorted out our shape. The last thing to do then before baking is an unwrap. Now, if you want to learn more about what unwrapping is, see my unwrapping playlist. But in its simplest form, it's turning this 3D object into a flat 2D surface. And in order to do that, we need to go around the marking seams. 
Now a good rule of thumb is put a seam where you've got a break in the texture. So the strap to the handle is an obvious place for the seam. So if I come into here, into edge mode, select that edge loop around there and control E, which goes to the edge menu, mark seam. That will turn those edges red or orange. So you know you've got a seam. So obviously we want one down at the bottom here of the strap as well. So if I select that, it's difficult to see, so I might just press Alt S on that to bring it out a touch and Alt E mark seam. And you can right click on this and add to quick favorites. So now I can press Q mark seam, a little bit quicker. <laughs> you miss one extra keyboard button. Now this is mirrored down the middle, so I might as well select the whole middle and cut this whole shape in half. We've got a lot of cylinders as well where we'll need to have a cut down one side. So that strap, for example, wouldn't have unwrapped correctly unless we had a cut down one side. So having a cut down the middle will be fine. So Q mark seams or Control E mark seams. Now the other good thing about marking a seam where a texture breaks is that now if I press Alt A to deselect all and go to face mode and press L, it will select just that linked area by the seam down the bottom here, you can see. So if I press L again, I can select that. And that can be very useful when it comes to texturing. You can select just that area and give it a base color by pressing fill. So we'll continue that up the top here. So into edge mode and select around here. You might have to go in and select some of these manually because they're on poles. And Q mark seams around here as well. And that's gone all the way around, is it? Nope, just there. Q mark seams. And where the strap meets the handle, now my topology flow doesn't go back this way, so I'll need to actually press Control and Shift to go around. So I'm holding down Control and Shift, and it takes the shortest route, which unfortunately is that way. So I'll undo that. And I'll just go a little bit shorter this time, and all the way around up to here. Just watch out, because sometimes it thinks the shortest route is what you don't expect. So holding down control when selecting takes the shortest route as it sees it, which is not particularly successful at the moment because of the poles I've got in here. And mark seams. Okay, just gonna check one thing, select all, M, merge by distance, just to check that there's no doubles as well. That can cause problems when you're unwrapping. And the last place I want to unwrap on the axe is up the top here. And that, interestingly, is going all the way around because that's quads. So Control-E mark seams. Okay, so we've got some nice areas for an unwrap. And we'll see if that works in a second. Just one more thing, we will need to unwrap these objects here, which are separate at the moment. So we'll just do a cut around there and a cut around there. Mark seams. And on this one. So I'll select all my objects, all my low poly objects, and you can see them selected there in my low poly list. And in order to see the unwrap, I'm going to go to the UV editing workspace. So I'll zoom in to my workspace there, zoom into my axe, and select all. And I'm selecting the other objects as well, these toruses at the bottom here. And you can see the messy unwrap it is at the moment. If I press U to unwrap, and not smart UV project, lots of people do that because it's an automatic unwrap, but unwrap if you've already marked your scenes. So unwrap there. And you can see it's come out okay there. Let's just go to the unwrap options and increase the margin. So the margin is the distance between each of your islands. And you can see it's really close there. And you don't want it too close because when you start painting or baking, it will overlap and go onto the other island. So we always have a nice margin of about 0 0.003. In fact, we'll go up more than that. We'll go 0 0.01. There we go. Make sure there's a nice margin between them. We can readjust these quite easily. Now one thing I want to check, my toruses came out very small and it just seemed a little bit too small compared to the rest of the mesh, but I could be wrong. I'm just gonna click on them, press N, and just check their scale. They're at one, so it should be fine, but my axe isn't at one. So it's assuming that this is much bigger than these toruses here. So I do need to set my scale, so Control A, set your scale, and then select all. I'll just hide my high poly for now. And then I can select all the low poly there and into edit mode and unwrap again and see what happens to my toruses now. There they are, they're nice and big, which is more like what I'd expect. Okay, let's take a closer look at my UVs by pressing control spacebar to maximize that window. Now we can come across here and select islands up the top there. 
and we can actually start moving these by pressing G to grab. Oh, can you see it's snapping though? I've still got snapping on, so G to grab. And I can just move these into position and kind of give them some space, which is not a bad idea, which should be fairly easy. And that's one reason why you want nice big islands like this. So if I press control spacebar again, we've got nice big areas with our unwrap. You don't want to go in and unless they are separate objects and to an unwrap down here, mark scene there, mark scene there, and unwrap every individual strap. You could do that if you wanted to, but it's much better to have nice big islands like this because they're easier to manage. Okay, so in your UV editor, there's one thing you'll want to check as well, which is select and then select overlap. And it hasn't selected anything, so I know there's no overlap. Overlap is a common problem in baking, texture painting, where you're painting on one area and it appears on another. That's because the UVs share the same UV space. So you don't want any overlap. It's really important to sort out. If you have got any overlap, it might be because let's say up here, if I didn't mark a seam there, then all these would be joined together and that's where you might get overlap. So just go around checking your loops. And if you have a problem area, so I'll select all again. And let's say I have a problem area just here where there's some overlap. In fact, let's go to edge mode, select that edge there. So I know there's some overlap here. There isn't, but as an example. With that selected, I can select this button up here, which is UV sync selection, and then make sure that's selected again. And that will actually select it on here, but also in here. And I can press the full stop or period key on your numpad to go to that place where that selection is, and then have a look and see what the error is. And that's where you can suddenly see, oh, I've missed a seam or something like that. So having UV sync selection on, and then selecting your face or your edge or verts, you can then press full stop or period key in the viewport and go to that problem area to sort it out. And then you can mark some new seams and just unwrap again. Okay, I've just noticed one last problem. I'm going to turn UV sync selection off again. And it looks like all my mesh has disappeared, but I haven't got it selected in here. And I've just noticed this island here. So let's go to island select, select that island. It's going off the canvas, so don't do that. I just G to grab and move that back on. Might need to rotate it slightly to maybe around there. Same tools as in the viewport, R to rotate, G to grab, and that's all looking good. Okay, so that's our UV unwrapping done and now we're ready for baking. Hopefully you're still enjoying this series. Let me know in the comments how you're getting on and do share your work with me on the Discord server or tag me in any forums. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.